Hi guys, just welcome back to the channel. My name is Spibs and today we're just going to be looking at the update that saw some changes and additions to the electricity system. But before we get into that, I just wanted to remind everyone that I now have a public Discord. The link will be in the description below, so go check that out. So I'm going to be releasing a second video uh, in the next couple of days, um, just showcasing an addition to uh, having backup power in your base. So I've already done a video previously about having uh, battery backup in your base, uh, which is going to be more important now, especially with turrets requiring electricity and people are going to have to provide solutions to that. So if you haven't checked it out already, go and uh, look at that video. I'll leave a link in the description below as well. But otherwise, I'll be um, doing a revision of that video as well. So we're just going to be looking at some changes to the large battery uh, and some other components that we um, were updated today, sorry. Uh, we're going to have a look at the new generator and then we'll have a look at the turret uh, update as well. Additionally, at the end of this video, I'll be showing a really simple uh, wiring setup for multiple turrets in the base. Um, and we'll go straight into it. Okie dokie guys, so the first thing that we're going to look at is just the large rechargeable battery. So nothing really much has changed here, it just has a new world model. Um, but we now have easier access to both the power in and the power out. Um, which is just a nice quality of life feature here. Um, still does the same thing, so it still outputs 100 units of power. If you're going to charge it throughout the day, it still needs a minimum of 40 units of power going throughout the whole entirety of the day, uh, on vanilla at least, to be able to run through the night. Um, I'll leave a, a link in the description to the video that explains that a lot more in depth. If you want to check that out, then go ahead. The other change to the large battery that um, is just another quality of life feature is you can rotate it uh, when you're trying to place it as well. So nice little changes there. And now we'll look at the generator. Alrighty guys, so here is the generator. Many of you might have already seen it in uh, some of the works in progress that they've been doing. Now this runs off low grade fuel, of course. It just has one slot which of course you can stack um, or put one stack of low grade in up to 500. It should last you about an hour and three minutes by my calculations. So it's quite a good amount of time to be able to run that up. Um, and of course you can restock it. Now you can just turn it on manually by walking up to it. It outputs a total of 40 units of power. Um, but there's a good little feature just like the other power sources that we have in game. Uh, where you can use the brute combiners if you require more power. Additionally, it also has two separate inputs here, one being for stop and one being for start. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, but what this means is you're able to wire another component into these inputs here and uh, trigger the generator to either start or stop remotely. Uh, and there's many different ways that you can do that. I'll be showing one of the ways that I figured out that you can have it automatically start uh, in one of the later videos that I talked about at the start of the video. All right, let's move on. One other thing I wanted to mention about the generator it is purchasable from the outpost for 175 scrap, and you can also research it for 75 scrap. And just quickly, there are two other small changes that they've added into this update. Now, the first one is with the normal switch. So we still have the output and the electric input that we always had, but we also have two more inputs here on the side, which is switch on and switch off, which means that we can remotely uh, control the switch. Um, say it's in another part of our base, we can use wireless electricity or perhaps even uh, another trigger to switch on or switch off the switch, which is pretty cool. The other little change is what they've done to the pressure pad. Now you can see that there's absolutely no power being received by the pressure pad. But what they've done is if I step onto the pressure pad, just for a split second, it outputs just a single unit of power. So I could perhaps hook this up to uh, the normal switch that we have there over on the left, 
or we could have it hooked up to the generator or something like that to be able to trigger something or perhaps if you had some sort of trap base or um, some defenses in your base that it could trigger that as well once again I just step onto it it just outputs a single unit of power just for a split second uh, and then it goes away completely now if we had power hooked up to the pressure pad then it would um, act as normal as it previously has in the past Okay guys, so now we're going to have a look at the turrets. Now this is the biggest change uh, that is in this update. Uh, in my opinion because the turrets have remained the same for years and years and years but of course help wanted to nerf them so to speak uh, and they now require electricity to be able to function so what you need is 10 units of power to be able to power the turret and you're also going to need tool cupboard access to interact with the turret that means to be able to auth or uh, put ammo in it or anything like that so I'm just going to use this branch here which I've set to output 10 units of power. I am not auth on the turret. I'm going to connect it to the power in of the turret here. Now it's locked on to me. Um, so I just wanted to point out that on the side here we have these three outputs. Now they're fairly self-explanatory. The first one here is has target. The second one is low ammo and the third is no ammo. So what I've done here is just connected it to these blue flasher lights. Um, but you can see that they're actually not working. This is because uh, the turret is using all 10 units of power. And for some reason, not one would presume with the three outputs, if they're all going to be used at once, you would need three extra units of power. But at this point, at least in my testing, that's not the case. So if I change the branch here to output 11 units of power, you'll see that all three flasher lights are going because of course it's locked onto me as the target. It's got no ammo in it at the moment and it's also meaning it's low on ammo. So at this point in time, the low ammo output will activate when the turret has 50 bullets or less. So if you have multiple turrets in the base, you can have it hooked up to indicate which is going on. Um, and you'll also, like I said, if you're going to use these outputs here uh, as an extra aid, you'll need to actually supply each turret with 11 units of power. Additionally, the turret has no um, pass-through output, so you can't uh, connect multiple turrets through um, each other. You'll have to have your electricity diverted uh, in some way, which I'll get into in the next video. Alrighty guys, so now we're just going to look at a really easy setup for having multiple turrets in a base. Now I've got eight turrets here, that's probably a little bit overkill, but I've got a large um, power delivery here. I've got uh, eight solar panels um, running at the moment. This is to allow me to charge the battery and power eight turrets at the same time. Um, I went with eight turrets because it's the maximum that I could fit in here with all the lights uh, that are attached to the outputs working at exactly the same time. Now the circuit that you can see on my left here is a circuit that I designed for a very very simple uh, battery backup system. You can go check that out in the link in the description below if you're not not sure how to wire one of those up but it's going to be more important now than ever with more people needing to use electricity uh, especially for base defense using turrets so what I have is the power delivery from the OR switch over to this basic switch here just to act as a master switch this is completely optional you can set it up however you like in your base but this is just how I'm showing you how to wire it up here I have it leading to the electrical branch, which is just going to branch 23 to this splitter over here. Now, the reason I've done that is we have 100 power coming from the OR switch uh, over to um, this circuit here. And the reason that I have 100 power is that's the maximum that the large battery can output. So I wanna match that just so we don't run into any problems um, when the battery kicks in. So uh, the remaining power is going to this splitter here, uh, which is delivering power to these other two splitters, which are all just connected to the power in of the turrets. It's really, really simple, guys. Usually I would show the wiring up, but this is 
really, really straightforward, so I just left it out completely. So what I'm going to do now is just flick the switch on, just to show that everything is working. Now you can see that one of the lights isn't flashing, and that's because I'm actually authed on the turrets, so they're not locking onto me, so it's not detecting that they have a target. But we know the outputs are working because the other lights are flashing. And we already showed earlier in the video that um, you only need that one extra power. So we can tell that everything's working here. It's very, very simple. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Of course, if you're a little bit more creative, then you can go ahead and design more com complicated systems. But this is all you really need to wire up your talents. Alrighty guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I just wanted to keep it nice and short and straight to the point. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, I have a public Discord now, so if you haven't already, go check that out and become part of the community there. Additionally, like I mentioned as well, I'll have another video coming out in the next day or so, just uh, covering some of the new components and how you can use them uh, as a backup for power in your base. And if you haven't already, go check out the battery backup video that I, I've already posted a couple of months ago. Um, I'm sure it'll be uh, more and more useful as time goes on and they add more components um, and features into the mix. Otherwise, guys, just like usual, if you dislike the video hit that thumbs down but if you did like it smash that thumbs up subscribe to the channel and we will see you in the next one take care